This episode of Film Riots brought to you by Red Steel 2 and Square Space. Spaces for squares. On today's episode, we review the Pentax K7, the Nikon D5000, and later, how much milk can Film Riot drink without throwing up? Stupid. Oh, I don't feel good. What's gonna happen? In the beginning, Adam bites the apple. In 1903, the first narrative film is made. In 93, Spielberg says, F you to evolution. And in 2009, Film Riot is released to the world. Wanna be a filmmaker? Well, so do I. Let's figure it out. We're going to be following trying films from pre to post production as we make our latest short film tell. Along the way, we're going to be showing you how to accomplish great effects with little to no budget. And every now and again, we'll be jumping over to Full Sail University to get you advice from the pros. So grab some popcorn and get comfortable. This is Film Riot. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques of going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. Remember last week I showed you a super cool email? Email! Hey, Ryan, got super black guy. proud of that. Anyway, last week I reviewed the Canon 5D and the Lumex GH1, and this week it's time to get to the Pentax K7 and the Nikon D5000. Activate! And back to work. The Pentax K7 was the camera we used for both the third and fourth segments of the sketch, and is Pentax's first DSLR with video capabilities. We're, we're doing this? We're doing it, buddy. We're doing this? We're doing it, buddy. To start it. Right off the bat, the camera feels great in your hands, and the body is dust, weather, and cold resistant. You can shoot in temperatures as low as 14 degrees. And just to put that in perspective, most cameras are rated at 32 degrees. You're right. You weren't ready yet. The Pentax K7 has a 14.6 megapixel sensor and can shoot either 720p or 1536 by 1024. Not really sure why they would choose such an odd resolution, and I thought there was going to be an issue when it came time to edit, but as it turns out, there were no issues at all, and I quickly forgot about the strange size. The quality on the K7 is great, which was partly due to the 16 through 50 millimeter lens we shot with, which bottoms out at 2.8. And I thought the image quality with this camera was much better than the GH1, and it was much more color correction friendly as well. And then I got wings. Come on. Just like the others, there's an on-camera mic, HDMI port, and a mic in jack, which is in a much better location than the rest. On the back of the camera, you have a really nice 3-inch LCD, and next to that, the menu controls. The menu on the K7 is simple and straightforward. There was no confusion here. I yell cut, not you. Hello. Bye bye. Above that, you find the control wheel to adjust your iris, and next to that is the auto exposure lock. And here's where my problem with the camera is. There is no manual control over the ISO or shutter during video mode with the K7. To get proper exposure, I basically had to trick the camera by pointing it at something a little darker or brighter than my scene and hitting the AE lock. This took a little bit of finessing and was annoying at first, but after a while it just became a simple workaround. It's unfortunate because otherwise the Pentax K7 is an amazing camera, so hopefully Pentax will come up with a firmware soon that will correct this issue. Some 24p would be nice as well. You guys were like, thinking the same thing and stuff. Whoa. Funny. How about the sponsor? E equals MC Laser! Ah, 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 ah. Sponsor. So we decided to test the real world application of Red Steel 2. Two of us have played the game, and two of us being the controls, me and Harris, have not. Test one, bullet deflection. Oh, Eris. No, right. is he, can he fan it? One deflection. I don't care, do whatever you want. Right, do whatever I want? All right. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> Tim. Ready, and shoot. <laughs> In the balls. Did he get you? Man down! Josh! Bring it, bring it to him. <laughs> oh, did he get it? <laughs> it's like instant. Yes! Yeah. Oh, oh, dude. That's a good one. Ryan. I get to shoot him. I blocked it. <laughs> I blocked it with my freaking hand. Test one complete. The only one to actually block a grape was me, someone who did not play Red Steel 2. So what does that say for our little test here? Test two, actual sword. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Ow! Actual sword fighting. <laughs> turn. Josh got so intense that he broke our other sword. So as it would turn out, Red Steel 2 seems to improve your sword play, but maybe not necessarily bullet deflection. And it's fun. And it's fun. Ah! Vindication. <laughs> Walk it off, buddy. Red Steel 2 is available now. Logo. final camera, and the one that didn't make it into the sketch simply because we didn't get it in time, is the Nikon D5000. The Nikon D5000 is a 12 megapixel camera just like the D90, and in video mode it shoots 720p at 24 frames per second. The image is nice and saturated, and for its price range, it does a pretty good job in low light settings. I feel like I'm like attached to a car and they're starting the Action. engine. Like, the lens feels a bit on the cheap side, but it's sharp and shoots good quality. Why am I... It has most of the same ports as the other cameras, including the HDMI port, but it has no mic in jack, and that's kind of a bummer. But if you do have the Nikon D5000, you can always use the on-camera mic for your reference audio, but that's not ideal. On the back, we find the Flip LCD, which is better than a static LCD, but not quite as good as the GH1. The LCD is 2.7 inches, but has a lot lower resolution than the other cameras, which made getting perfect focus a lot more difficult. Towards the top, you'll find the scroll wheel, and next to that, the auto exposure lock. Just like the Pentax K7, the Nikon D5000 will constantly change your image settings unless you have the auto exposure lock on. But unlike the Pentax K7, you constantly have to have your finger on the button, which became very annoying for me. Just do it again. Just do it again. Okay. So to be fair to the camera, me and Josh set up the same scene with the same lighting and took a few shots with the Nikon D5000. <laughs> Nikon showed grain on relatively low ISO settings and had a bit of a jitter no matter how steady I tried to be. Now of course I'm comparing this to much more expensive models, but at $630 you'd probably be a lot better off going with the Canon T2i. How was it tears? I looked directly at the camera. You did. Between the Canon 5D, the Pentax K7, the Panasonic GH1, and the Nikon D5000, the one that reigned supreme was obviously the Canon 5D, but that was the most expensive of the bunch as well. So if you're going on more of a low budget, my number two choice was the Pentax K7. Now, I think the Canon 7D would actually be a better choice for you guys, but we weren't able to get our hands on one. We're still trying, and we'll hopefully be able to get the Canon 7D and the Canon T2i to do some test shots side by side for you guys. But that's enough work, let's get to some nonsense. And now for something completely different. So we have one more outside activity for this episode. We all put in a little wager to see who could drink the most milk without throwing up in the matter of five minutes. So each of us put in $100, and the one standing in the end last to throw up gets all the money. I don't think it's gonna be me. It's thick. Oh, yum. Drink it. It is hot. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> I can't even get one glass, dude. This is three. Oh, I see. I see Ryan vomiting too. Buttons up. Holy suck a butt. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon. Come on, let it out. Probably the most disgusting. Oh. <laughs> this is the most disgusting segment film Ryan has ever oh, done. Oh boy. Cheers. This is a terrible idea. Come on, Ryan. Oh, all I taste is, all I taste is cow. Are you gonna vomit, Bruno? Not anytime soon. All right, well, I'm gonna keep it on Ryan. Oh, here we go. Chug, chug. <laughs> Dude, you still got 
so much milk left, Ryan. Oh, dude, I'm doing it. <laughs> dude, dude, I'm gonna throw up <laughs> in my milk, God, man. Come that way, bro. I'll throw up in this is stupid. Oh, uh, I don't feel good. Yeah, I'm just... Boss alarm. Boss alarm. Boss alarm. <laughs> Was that a vomit? Was that vomit? Was that another dry? Oh! There it is! There it is! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! What? I think I peed the most though. So he's still got a little throat. I to think go. I peed a little but bit. But Bruno, here's your three hundred dollars. Enjoy that. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. <clears throat> that was the dumbest segment of film riot ever. It's good to be back. It's hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Are you really? I'm not. Nope. No, forget that. Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any other kind of website. And Squarespace, being the amazing team that they are, have built Trying Films an incredible new site layout that we have just launched today. So now I can go in and adjust size, color, and positioning of all the elements in my site without having to know any coding at all. And they've made it insanely easy to keep all my content up to date as well. So check out tryinfilms.com and leave a comment in the news section to let us know what you think. Then jump over to squarespace.com and get your site started. And if you do, don't forget to represent by using the promo code FILMRIOT so you can get 10% off the life of your order. So there you go, we've wrapped up our DSLR review. But like I said, hopefully we'll be getting the 7D and T2i and possibly even the 1D Mark IV in the future, but we'll just have to wait and see. And now you're thinking, hey, why is he wearing the same shirt as last week? Maybe I like it. Maybe it's my favorite shirt. What is it to you? Now I'm offended. You know what, screw my end dialogue. See you next Thursday. Email, Twitter, and Facebook. Still upset though. Ready, set, set. of cinema, tell meaningful stories without people <laughs>